All right, well, I, uh, I hate to break up the conversations, but we have a very exciting part of the program now to begin with Vice President Mary Beth Wardrop. All of you know who she is. She has been so supportive of the Howenstein Center. And in fact, the Howenstein Center exists because Mary Beth was friends with Ralph Howenstein when she was at Aquinas as their lead development officer and vice president over there and did a phenomenal job, by the way, at Aquinas, showing a lot of leadership and building up their endowment. Uh, she cultivated this great friendship with Ralph Howenstein. When she came over to Grand Valley State University, she brought our dear friend Ralph with her. That's one of the things I, 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 will always, I will always feel indebted to Mary Beth for that alone. Mary Beth has been a community leader. She has been involved in higher education for 35 years. She's been in fundraising for decades. And she is really a pro at We are so fortunate to have her leadership here. When I was just in uh, Naples with her in development and her team, I was impressed by all the statistics I heard about our development division. We really are the leaders in this community. And if you consider the fact that last year, and remember, last year officially began a recession. In that year, Mary Beth's division was able to raise $28.9 million. That was more than her division had ever raised. And so to do that in a recessionary climate is really phenomenal. She uh, continues to speak. She has uh, spoken around campus and uh, shared her story with various groups. And um, you know, with all the great statistics, uh, I think at a very human level, it's important to remember something that to me is very moving. Mary Beth just doesn't come to this university and work and then go home. She's committed to it in a way. She's committed to you. And I'll give you an example of that. Several of you are aware now of the John Wardrop Fund. Well, the John Wardrop Fund will go to fund scholars of the Leadership Academy. And we're pleased by that because this represents a personal commitment of Mary Beth and her two kids who contributed to that fund. And it, it, it's just, it was a lovely gift, and we're so appreciative that you've been able to do that and share that with us. And Mary Beth spearheaded that. So she's not just somebody who comes to her office. She has that personal commitment to our university and to you, the students. So all the news has been up, uh, the, the fundraising has been up, the increase in scholarships under Mary Beth has been up. The only thing that has suffered, the only thing that's down is her golf game. Yes. She's been working so hard. But please, please join me in welcoming Mary Beth Woodruff. Okay. Selma, I need your help. I'm going to try, can you hear me better with the mic? Okay. I was going to try to do it without the mic that I have to hold, but because I like to be able to, uh, I like to be able to use my hands. I lived in New York for a while. And um, I got used to using my hands from all my people, my friends out of New York. Good afternoon. Thank you for your kind invitation. I'm humbled, really, by your interest. I can't believe anybody wants to hear about what a fundraiser has to say. <clears throat> you know, a fundraiser never gets invited for lunch. <laughs> Nobody ever thinks, God, I really want to have lunch with Mary Beth Wardrop. You know why? Because if you give me an inch, I'll take a mile. <laughs> Let me tell you how bad fundraisers have it. Three, three men, of course, men, arrived at the pearly gates. One was a doctor, one was a lawyer, and one was a fundraiser. The doctor said to Peter, to Peter at the pearly gate, I am so pleased and honored to be here. I am such, such a good doctor. And St. Pete was looking in his file and he said, you have been a great doctor. You've been a great person. But you still have to go to purgatory for one year. The fundraiser started shaking. Next came the lawyer. The lawyer went up there and St. Pete said, Let's look at your record. And the lawyer said, I've been a great, great lawyer. And he said, I'm looking at your record. 
He said, you've been a great lawyer, a great person, but you're going to have to go to purgatory for two years. The fundraiser is just shaking. Huh? His hands are shaking, his knees are shaking, his head is shaking. He said, well, if the great doctor and the great lawyer have to go to purgatory, I'm sure I'm going to go to hell. St. Peter said, why should I let you in? What have you done all of your life? And the fundraiser said, I've been a fundraiser. I've been a fundraiser for many, many a year. The fundraiser is still shaking and shaking. With that, the gates of heaven flew open and the bells started ringing and the harp started playing. And St. Pete said, you've had your hell on earth. You come <laughs> Come in. Well, I haven't had my hell on earth, but being a fundraiser is difficult. And I have to tell you, I think the year ahead of us is going to be even more difficult. Um, it is difficult out there, but you have to just look for new strategies. I am just going to at, say this one thing about this university. I want you to know we are in great financial shape. Our enrollment's up. We are doing everything right, so don't have any concerns. We may have to keep tuition down this year, but that just means that we're not going to be able to move ahead as fast as we have in the past. Now on to what I really want to talk about. I want to talk about three different areas. Ralph Hauenstein, my favorite subject. If I can do it, all of you can do it. And leadership <coughs> qualities. As you see by the handout, my pillars are faith, family, friends, and education. I have three pillars. I have values. I am a real common sense person. And if I can't do it by common sense, I do it by hard work. And there are things that I will not give up on, that I'm persistent about, and that's integrity, courage, and vision. Now I've given you a list and there's a list of 31 things, and I am challenging you to keep adding to this list as I speak and throughout your speeches. And what I want you to do is to get to 52, 52 characteristics, and I want you to email them back to me. And when we email them back, you and I are going to do something. We are going to say that we're gonna focus on one of these a week for the next year. And if you do that, you will be the best leaders I know. Okay, a deal, Summa? Okay, Ralph Howenstein. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite subject. Once in a lifetime, you meet a man who makes a difference in your life, in your city, in your country, and in your world, and that's Ralph Howenstein. I was fortunate enough to meet Ralph at Aquinas College one afternoon in, I think, 1997 or 1998. Now think about this. Ralph and Grace were having dinner at the president's house one spring day, and Ralph started telling stories about World War II. Grace had never heard them. Grace had never heard them. As we walked out of the president's office, she said this was a very enlightening lunch. She said, I didn't know what my husband did in World War II. It was about 1997 or 1998, those people who are in this community will realize Ralph started going public. That was then. I was so honored to be Ralph, called Ralph's friend. Ralph is a man of character, charisma, competence, confidence and courage. Now write those down, that go, those go on the list. Some of them aren't on there. He was a good friend at Aquinas College. He was a good friend of mine, but I left the college in November of 1999. <coughs> I was offered a position by Don Lubbers here. And I was really pleased. And I was sad to leave some of the donors at Aquinas College. And I was very sad to leave Ralph Hauenstein. I would have never gone to bring Ralph here because of integrity. But Ralph self-selected in at a Grand Valley event, which made him open target for a fundraiser. 